In this video, I'll show you how to set up a skeleton for your 2D character and then animate it using inverse kinematics. Step 1. Lay out your character in Photoshop, ensuring you have a different object for the legs, arms, torso, and head. Also ensure the layer order is how you would like it to reflect inside Unity. When you're happy with your creation, go to File, Save As, find the project that you would like to import it into, and save it as a PSB file. Step 2. In Unity, go to Windows, Package Manager, and ensure 2D Animation and 2D PSD Importer have been installed. Step 3. Find your PSB that you imported, click Sprite Editor, and drop it down to Skinning Editor. This is where we will be rigging our character. Step 4. Click Create Bone, and then starting from the bottom of the torso, begin creating the spine up to the head of your character. You can right click to end the chain. To do the limbs, click the pivot of the closest bone to create a parented chain. So I'm going to create the top of the leg, the bottom of the leg, and then the foot. I'll do the same for the back leg. Now that I have those mapped out, I can tidy them up a bit by clicking Edit Bone and then bringing the pivots down to where they should be. Like that. I'm now going to do the same thing for my arms using the middle torso bone. And I'll tidy those up. And now your skeleton is complete. To make your life easier while animating and manipulating IK, you can click on a bone and rename it. For example, I'll call this one Spine 1, this one Spine 2, this one Head, and so on. Once you're done, click Apply to save your changes. Step 5. Now that we've sorted out our skeleton, we need to assign what geometry is controlled by each specific bone. An easy way to do that is to click Audio Geometry and Generate for All Visible. Now, the mesh will be following the bone, but as you can see, it's not perfect. For example, this torso is being affected by this arm here and that's undesirable for me. So to fix this, I'm going to double click the torso mesh, I'm going to click Bone Influence, and then I'm going to unassign the bones which I would not like to affect this mesh. For example, I don't want the head to affect it, I would not like either of the arms or the leg, and then click the minus button here. Now you'll notice the torso is not affected by the arm mesh or the leg mesh. To reset the pose, simply click this Reset Pose button. You should now be able to pull your PSB directly onto the scene and manipulate the bones the way you'd like. If we inspect our new object, we will see a newly created bone hierarchy, as well as sprite renderers with the correct order layering depending on your Photoshop import. To avoid manipulating the original PSB file, let's right click it, create, prefab variant. Let's call this avatar. This is the object we will use going forward. Step six, to add IK to our rig, click the root object, add component, IK manager 2D. Here you will see a list of your current solvers to which we have none. To begin, click the plus button and select limb. Here, this will create a new limb solver for you. I'm going to call this front arm solver. Next, we need to create the effector of the limb. So I'm going to go to my front arm and on the last bone of my arm, I'm going to create an empty game object and call this effector. I'm going to put this to the end of my bone, select my solver, pull my effector into the effector slot and then click Create Target. 
This will create a new target underneath your solver. You can grab this target and now move the arm around using IK. I'm going to now do this for my remaining limbs. Go back to your IK manager and click new limb. This will be my back arm solver. I now go to my back arm bone, create an effector. Remember to slide the effector down to the end of the bone, slot in the effector, create target. And you'll notice with this bone, it is bending the wrong way in a very painful way. So what you can do is you can click your new solver and click the flip checkbox. Let's do the same for the legs. Now for the legs, I don't want him to be walking on his tippy toes. So I'm going to be using the bottom, the ball of the foot joint here as the uh, effector joint. So lower back leg, create the effector. Make sure you slide the effector down to the end of the bone. Create target. Let's do it for the other leg. And there we go, with the limbs done, we can now move them all around and affect him in a realistic manner. If you want to reset the pose of your character, click the IK manager and restore default pose. As you can see, the hierarchy can get pretty confusing. What I like to do is create an empty game object and call it my solvers. And I will grab all of my solvers and place within. And as these do not need a parent-child relationship, I will then grab my targets and then place them outside of the group. Next, you'll notice now that if you move your torso, your arm targets don't move with it. So I grab my arm targets and then let's make them a child of the spine. And be sure to override the changes you've made so far on this prefab variant. Step seven, it's time to animate. Click window, animation, and open the animation tab and dock it. And let's also open the animator tab and dock it down there as well. To begin animating, select your avatar and click record. Now you can begin manipulating the bones to fit your animation, remembering that the limbs themselves should only be changed using the targets. Whereas the torso and the head can be directly manipulated by the bone. Because I set my IK to only use the two top bones of the leg, I can directly change my feet position. Next, move forward a little bit in the time frame and change the bones a little bit. To perfectly loop your animation, you can highlight all your first keyframes, Control C to copy, go to where you'd like your animation to end, Control V, and then press spacebar to try it out. If you learned something, consider subscribing to the channel. In the next video, I'll show you how you can convert this into a ragdoll when the player dies.